Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn about quantum numbers. So what are quantum numbers and how do they work? Well, in an earlier video we learned how to write the electron configurations and draw the orbital diagrams for different atoms on the periodic table. And we learned that those electron configurations and orbital diagrams represented the highest probability for where those electrons in an atom can be located. And in this video, we are going to be learning about quantum numbers. We're going to be expanding on the electron configuration and atomic orbital and learning about quantum numbers. So what is a quantum number? Well, it says right here that a quantum number represents the address of a specific electron in an atom. And no two electrons in an atom have the same quantum number. So a quantum number is essentially the address of an electron uh, of a specific electron in a given atom. And when we write the quantum numbers or address for a specific electron in an atom, the following order is used. So there's four different quantum numbers that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about N, we're going to talk about L, we're going to talk about M sub L and M sub S. And when we write the address for a specific electron in a given atom, we typically write the quantum number n first, followed by l, followed by the quantum number m sub l, followed by the quantum number m sub s. So what do these quantum numbers represent? Well, n, as it says right here, represents the principal energy level or ring that the electron is in. If we have the nucleus of an atom right here, then here is the uh, very first principal energy level, and this would be n equals 1. If we take a look at the second ring that surrounds this atom right here, then if there's an electron in this ring or principal energy level, then n would equal 2, and so on and so on. And so the n value, it says right here, must be whole numbers from 0 to 7. And so n represents the principal energy level or ring that the electron has the highest probability of being in. Let's take a look at the quantum number L. It says right here that L represents the shape of the sublevel the electron is in. So essentially L can either be the S sublevel, the P sublevel, the D sublevel, or the F sublevel. And if we say that L is zero, then that's referring to an S sublevel. If we say that L is one, then that's referring to a P sublevel. If we say that L is 2, then that's going to refer to a D sublevel. And if L is 3, then that's going to refer to an F sublevel. All right, so that's our second quantum number. N is the principal energy level. L is going to be or is going to represent the sublevel, either S, P, D, or F. And then M sub L represents the place in three dimensional space the electron is in each sublevel or orbital. And these can be values of negative L to positive L. So when we drew the, or when we wrote the orbital diagrams for different elements, we said that an S only gets one box. We said that a P gets three boxes. We said that a D sublevel gets five boxes. And we said that an F sublevel ends up with seven boxes and that these boxes represented the actual orbitals that these electrons can end up being in. And so M sub L represents the place in three-dimensional space that the electron is in each of these little boxes or orbitals right here. And if we take a look, if we pretend this is a number line right here, then this would be zero, this would be positive one, this would be negative one. If there's an electron in here, then that means its, uh, its electron is uh, one right of center. If there's an electron right here in this little box or orbital, then that would be uh, one left of center. If we take a look right here, this would be zero, this would be positive one, this would be positive two. This here would be negative one, this here would be negative two. If we take a look right here, the center at the center 
we'll have zero. This would be plus one, this would be plus two, this would be plus three. This is negative one, this is negative two, and negative three. So if there's an electron that is in this uh, orbital right here, then we would say that the m sub l value would be negative two. And so m sub l represents the place in three-dimensional space, the electron is in each orbital, each one of these little boxes, which brings us to the very last quantum number, m sub s. m sub s represents the spin of the electron and can either equal positive one-half or negative one-half. If the arrow is pointed up in each one of these orbitals, then its m sub s value will be positive one-half, and if it's pointed down, then the m sub s value will be negative one-half. And so what we can do now is we can start to write the address or quantum numbers for a, a, a specific electron in an atom. So let's go ahead and apply the principle of these four quantum numbers to several different example problems. In this first example, it says using the orbital diagram below, determine the four quantum numbers of the electron that is highlighted purple. So we need to determine the address, the atomic address for this electron that is highlighted purple. We want to know what the quantum numbers for this electron that is highlighted purple in this carbon atom right here. So we've written the electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. We've drawn the uh, orbital or box diagram. Here it is. And now what we want to do is we want to figure out what the quantum numbers for this uh, this purple electron in the 2s orbital is going to be. So let's first figure out n. What is n here? n is going to be the ring or the energy level that this electron is in, and we can see it's in the second energy level. Next, let's take a look at L. Remember that L represents the sublevel that this electron is in, and if we take a look, the sublevel is s. And what L value corresponds to the S sublevel? Well, that's going to be zero. If we take a look, what is M sub L going to be? Because this electron is in the S sublevel, and the S sublevel only has one box that we see right here, then its M sub L value will also be zero since it's in the center box. There's only one box here. And last, if we take a look, the arrow here, or this electron, or this arrow, is pointed downwards. So the m sub s value is going to be equal to negative one half. And so here are all of our quantum numbers. And when we write quantum numbers, we're typically going to write them in this order. n followed by l, followed by m sub l, followed by m sub s. And so the quantum numbers for this electron here that's purple is going to end up being 2, 0, 0, negative 1 half. So this is the address for this little electron. This little electron has the address 2, 0, 0, negative 1 half. Let's take a look at another example. In the second example, we have aluminum and we've written the electron configuration for aluminum right here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1. And we've drawn the box diagram, which we learned how to do in an earlier video. And so what we want to do here is we want to figure out the address or the quantum numbers for this downward facing electron in the 2p uh, orbital right here or sublevel. So how can we do this? Well, if we take a look here, we have to first determine what principal energy level this downward facing electron is in. It's in the second principal energy level. Let's now figure out the L value or the L quantum number. If we take a look, we see that this electron is in a P sublevel. And the corresponding L value for a P sublevel is 1. Remember, if L value equals 1, that that then that is going to be a p sublevel. If l value is 0, then that is going to equal an s sublevel. If the l value here is 2, then that is going to be a d sublevel. If the l value is 3, then that is going to be an f sublevel. So if we take a look, our sublevel is p, 
and so the corresponding L value for a P sublevel is 1. Let's now take a look at M sub L value. If we take a look at M sub L value, we can see that this sublevel P has three boxes right here. This would be negative 1, this would be 0, and this would be positive 1. And so if we take a look, this electron is in the center, right? It is in the center. So we'll give a corresponding value of 0 for M sub L. And last, if we take a look at its spin, it's facing downwards, and so the spin gets negative one half. It would be positive one half if it were pointed upwards. So the quantum number or quantum numbers for this electron here in an aluminum atom is going to end up being two, one, zero, negative one half. And that's going to be the address or the quantum numbers for this electron right here. Let's take a look at another example. In this third example, it says using the orbital diagram below, determine the four quantum numbers of the electron that is highlighted in purple. So if we take a look, we have nickel. Here is our electron configuration for nickel, which we learned how to write out in an earlier video. And here is our orbital or box diagram. And so what we have to do is we have to determine the quantum numbers or the atomic address for this little electron here. And so if we take a look, first of all, let's figure out what energy or principal energy level this electron is in. We see it's in the third principal energy level. We see also that it is in the D sublevel. And so the L value that corresponds to a D sublevel is going to end up being two. If we take a look at these five orbitals represented by these boxes in this D sublevel here. Then at the center we will have zero. To the right we'll have positive one, positive two. To the left we'll have negative one and negative two. And so where is this electron right here? Well, if we take a look, M sub L tells us which of these boxes or orbitals this electron is in. It's in the negative one orbital. And last but not least, if we take a look at the spin, it's pointed upwards. So it gets the quantum number of plus one half. And so keep in mind that when we write the quantum numbers for an atom here, N always comes first, followed by L, followed by M sub L, followed by M sub S, and so if we take a look, it looks like we'll have 3, 2, M sub L is negative 1, and M sub S is going to be positive 1 half. So here is, or here are the quantum numbers for this electron here in a nickel atom. Let's take a look at another example. In this fourth example, we have titanium, and we have the electron configuration for titanium right here. We also have the orbital or box diagram that we see right here. And what we need to figure out are the quantum numbers for this electron right here. And so let's figure out what N is going to be. We can see that this electron right here is in the third principal energy level. We see right here that the sublevel is D and the corresponding L value for a D sublevel is going to end up being two. We see that M sub L is going to be, let's see here, if this is the center uh, orbital right here, this would be negative one, this would be negative two, this would be positive one, this would be positive two, and so the M sub L value is going to end up being negative two. And last but not least, if we take a look at the spin here, it's pointed upwards, and if the arrow is pointed upwards, it gets a positive one half value for M sub S. And so when we write the quantum numbers for this, keep in mind that N always comes first, followed by L, followed by M sub L, followed by M sub S. And so our N value here is 3, the L value here is 2, the M sub L value is negative 2, and the M sub S value is plus 1 half. So here are the four quantum numbers for our electron that is highlighted purple in this titanium atom. Let's take a look at one final example. 
In this fifth and final example, it says the position of an electron is defined by the four quantum numbers seen below. Fill in the correct information in the spaces provided to complete the statement. So in these problems here, we know the four quantum numbers. We know the four quantum numbers in these two examples. And when we write quantum numbers, we always write N first, followed by L, followed by M sub L, followed by M sub S. And so our N value here is four. So that means that the electron is in the fourth principal energy level. Our L value here is two. And anytime the L value is two, that represents the D sub level. If we take a look right here, the M sub L value is negative two. And so that means that it's two left of center, right? The orbital two left of center. If we take a look at our orbital diagram, and then if we take a look right here, the spin is negative one half, which represents a downward spin. So there we go. Let's take a look at this example right here. Here are our quantum numbers. The first one is always N. The second one represents the sublevel or L. The third one here represents the orbital that the electron is in. And M sub S represents the spin of our electron. So if we take a look here, the electron here is in the fifth principal energy level. We have an L value of three, which represents the F sub level. And if we take a look at the orbital that that electron is going to be in, will be in the center, if we have our orbital diagram or a box diagram, the electron will be in the center box. And if we take a look, it has a positive one half spin, which means it's an upward spin. So there we go. So if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner that will subscribe to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions in the comment section down below. And I really hope you guys found this helpful.